Right now, I'm in Canberra, staying at ANU for the National Mathematics Summer School. Walking through the university grounds reminded me about my own years at uni. Uh, when I was at uni starting to become a teacher, I read a lot of research and articles about the nature of intelligence. And since graduating and teaching for a little while, I've had some thoughts about that, so I wanted to talk to you today about whether intelligence is fixed or fluid. Uh, the idea of fixed intelligence is that there are basically smart people, basically dumb people, and a whole spectrum in between. But whatever you are, you more or less stay that way for your entire life. Now, educational researchers also talk about fixed types of intelligence, which means that people are born with an innate ability to understand certain things, but not others. And the idea of fixed intelligence is that those abilities are very hard to change. Fluid intelligence, on the other hand, is all about the idea that our intelligence can shift and change, not just subtly, but dramatically over time and given different stimuli. Now, this idea has gotten a lot of currency recently because of neurological research that has shown the brain isn't a physiologically static organ, which is what people thought of for a long time. Now, you might have heard of the term neuroplasticity, which refers to the brain's ability to develop new pathways and synapses in response to certain behaviors and environmental factors. Now, fluid intelligence, I think, is kind of like the Disney approach to mental ability, which is, you know, you can become anything if you believe in yourself. Most of this sounds pretty academic, but the truth is that most people, regular guys on the street, believe in fixed or fluid intelligence to some degree. Okay, now take fixed intelligence. Uh, often when I introduce myself as a math teacher, people will say, oh, I've never been a very maths kind of person. Okay, now there's an assumption underneath that statement, namely that there are maths people and non-maths people, and that's an unchangeable quality about you that can't be altered. That's fixed intelligence, right? On the other hand, I've also had conversations with lots of parents who express confusion at their children having difficulty with maths. You know, many seem to be under the impression that if you force someone to do enough exercises and put them in enough tutoring sessions, then they have to become better at maths or science or English or, or whatever. Their expectation is that their child's brain should be endlessly malleable given the right inputs. And that's fluid intelligence. The interesting thing for me about the whole fixed fluid intelligence argument is that it's really practical, right? As a teacher, it has a massive impact on how I approach my students on a day-to-day -day basis. Do I not bother with some students because I know they'll just never get it? Or do I push some relentlessly because I know they're capable of understanding things they haven't even heard of yet? Now, before I go on, what do you think? Do you think intelligence is mainly fixed or mainly fluid? Right now, the thought I'm having is yes. Yes, it is fixed in some respects and fluid in others. And to put it differently, intelligence, I think, is flexible. Uh, it can definitely change and grow, but it has real limits and we should be okay with that. In my experience, the people who said, yeah, I'm not a maths kind of person, it probably had a bad experience or an unhelpful teacher at one point in their life. And since then, they've given up on understanding all the X's and Y's and derivatives because it's just been more trouble than it's worth. But if they give it a real go with the right help, they'd probably be able to understand way more than they ever thought possible. Intelligence is not as fixed as many people think it is. At the same time, I think that every human brain does have its own unique personality and desires and mental strengths that we ought to recognize. You know, some people do understand patterns better and more quickly, while others need to struggle with them a bit longer. You know, some people are able to turn a beautiful phrase or pick the best camera angle with very little training, while others require more guidance before they have those skills. You know, and that's okay. That's part of what makes us individuals, and we should embrace that rather than thinking that everyone has to be good at the same things for you know, maths or physics or English. So what kind of intelligence do you have? Embrace it for what it is but always remember to push the envelope and challenge yourself to try things that seem out of reach. You might surprise yourself.